Hello class and welcome to our presentation, Introduction to Bioethics. So in this brief presentation, we are going to define what bioethics is. We'll talk about a few examples of major dilemmas in this subfield. We'll talk about a crucial critique of bioethics, the issue of personhood, and then I'll leave you with you some major questions to consider over the next two weeks. So what is bioethics? Bioethics is the study of moral dilemmas related to biomedical research and procedures. Put simply, bioethicists are interested in exploring whether certain advancements in biomedicine and biotechnologies are considered moral or immoral. So what kind of biomedical and biotechnological dilemmas are we talking about? Well, here we have a few examples. Abortion, cloning, stem cell research, and euthanasia are all considered major dilemmas within the subfield of bioethics. Abortion is, a general definition, the deliberate termination of a pregnancy. Cloning, the genetic copying of a living being, human or animal. Stem cell research, or the harvesting, testing, and using of fertilized, what are called super pluperfect embryos for medical procedures. And euthanasia, also known as physician assistant suicide, is a medically deliberate termination of the life of a terminally ill patient. So all of these dilemmas in one form or another involve something regarding um, the medical service industry or some kind of biomedical technology and whether or not such procedures are moral or not. Now, one crucial critique of bioethics is the following. Bioethicists hinder medical advancement. So what does this mean? Well, some medical researchers allege that bioethicists are unnecessary whistleblowers that do nothing but slow the process of curing patients suffering from often incurable diseases. For example, advocates of stem cell research argue that further advancement in stem cell harvesting can lead to the curing of Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, as well as in the repairing of organs and tissues. However, bioethicists have played a role in slowing advancements in stem cell research, pointing out that the procedure of harvesting and testing stem cells is morally questionable. So in other words, according to many in the medical service field, we could be curing people of these diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's today. I mean, we have the technology at our fingertips, but bioethicists are slowing us down. So two questions I pose to you with respect to this critique of bioethics are the following. Are, criti are critics of bioethics making a valid point here? Do bioethicists indeed slow biomedical progress? And if so, is this a bad thing or is it a good thing? Or is it necessary at times to halt biomedical research for the sake of morality? So again, just a couple of questions for us to think about. Now, one major issue that is relevant in arguably all of our bioethical dilemmas in this course is that concerning the question of personhood. And we've come across the question of personhood in the animal rights unit, but just as a reminder, here's a general definition. Personhood refers to a quality that a being has that grants it some kind of moral dignity or moral rights. Now, why is the question of personhood relevant in bioethics? Because bioethicists are concerned about whether certain biological entities have personhood and therefore can be granted certain moral protections. For example, is a zygote or fertilized embryo a person? Is a fetus a person? Is a comatose patient a person? Is a stem cell 
a person. So again, bioethicists are concerned with these questions of, do these biological entities, whether they are a zygote or a comatose patient in a hospital, do these biological entities have personhood and therefore are granted some kind of moral rights or protection? Now, as we approach our dilemma of abortion this week, this question of personhood will become critical. Okay, why? Because in asking the question, is abortion moral? We are essentially asking, does a zygote have personhood? Does a fetus have personhood? And do these biological entities therefore possess moral rights and protections that should be honored by the legal system? So as we approach our debates regarding abortion and next week cloning, there are three questions that I would like for us to reflect upon over the next two weeks. What is personhood? What qualities must a being possess to be granted personhood? Secondly, when does personhood begin? Does it begin at the zygote stage? Does it begin when people are born? Does it begin at all? Is there no such thing as a person? And if personhood does exist, uh, can it end? And if so, when does it end? And the third question is, what are religious viewpoints on personhood? And how does this shape religious perspectives on bioethical issues such as abortion and cloning? So not only are these things to keep in mind over the next two weeks, but also in particular in our discussion forum, and in preparation for the discussion forum, you'll be watching a couple of videos on personhood and reproduction to kind of help you along the way.